the beans started coming towards the pulpit without a Bible. An old four four time, and he just moved his hide out the way. <laughs> I know how to say out of the way. Fun being retarded. <laughs> this guy's funny. Brother Bean talked for maybe 20 seconds. All men was Yeah. And when he started coming down the aisle, his family nearly lost their breath. Because this is what they prayed for. Right. Do, do, do you all know about memorial prayers? Yeah. The only way I know to liken a memorial prayer, instead of Cornelius, thy prayers that come up as a memorial. To me, it's like layaway. I had a suit when I was a teenager on layaway so long I forgot what color it was. <laughs> but when I made that last 50 cents, I got it out. You never know when you pray your last prayer right. or a situation. You never know when that last day that, that sinner husband comes in, that wayward child prays back through. When Paul went, started down towards the altar, those men come out of their seats. They swarmed him like a pack of dogs swarming a three-legged cat. <laughs> you could not see Paul from the, the ladies, could because the men just all gathered around. You could hear them wailing and travailing and shouting and in high heels are thumping on the floor. And about Five minutes a roar went up right here. Paul Mitt was talking in tongues. When I watched Paul get that eraser and erase his name off of the blackboard, I thought, man, we're going to have us a revival. This ain't nothing. There's nothing to this. God answers prayer. All you've got to do is ask. Look at your name and say, just ask. I don't know what your needs are. So you may need a new church building. You may need transportation. You may need a job. You may need healing in your body. All you've got to do is ask. You may be praying for revival. You may be praying for an addiction. All you've got to do is ask in Jesus' name. Put your hands together, please. talk to you about daddy talk. How many of you guys have a daddy? Most of you. All the rest of you test tubers <laughs> may not understand what I'm saying. <laughs> this is about the time of the year we're going to start hearing ice cream trucks. And the men who tweak the speakers on ice cream trucks, tweak them so that a five-year-old can hear the sound of that music 1.3 miles away. And I don't care what Junior is doing out in the backyard, but when he hears that stupid sound of the ice cream truck, he drops whatever he is doing. Yeah. He runs up to the house and you can hear the screen door slam. Give me give me two dollars, one for Bobby too. The kid doesn't have any problem spitting out what he wants and why he wants it. If you don't have a problem as a five-year-old tall telling your daddy what you need, why as 55-year-olds do you have a problem telling your heavenly father what you need? It's time some of us just spit it out and say, God, I gotta have this in Jesus' name. He said, ask him in service here. He said, my favor is just this big. I can say that out and be even moved and pass it to the seat. He said, take with your words, and I got some words, God. Most of you got it, but for a few of you, I'm gonna have to take the bus around the block one more time. You didn't. You didn't get on board on that. The year was 1963, coming home from Bible school, driving a 55 Ford, coming into Grand Island, Nebraska. I left California with $25 and a gas credit card. I'm eating health food all the way. 
free toes, Dr. Peppers, and moon pies. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping in the car when I, for an hour or two at a time. And it's <coughs> May, it's still light, about eight or so left. So right now, about this time, it's almost six o'clock. And the speed limit has two signs, the daytime and the nighttime, two different colors. Daytime, speed limit, 65. Nighttime, 60, if I remember correctly. And I look in my rearview mirror and I see one of Nebraska's finest advertising the bubblegum machine behind me. I pull over from here to the wall in front of all those speed limit signs. And I open my door, and a gun can smell it at me. And I freeze. I put my hands on the steering wheel. He comes around with a hammer pulled back on his 357 mag. State trooper walks around the car real slow, comes back up, pulls it to my head, asks for my driver's license and registration. I give it to him. He explains to me that there has been a break out of the state pen and my car matched the description of the getaway car. Thank you, devil. Sometimes the devil tries to bless you in ways you really don't appreciate. And so he said, but since you were speeding, I'm going to have to give you a ticket. I said, how fast was I going, officer? He said, you were doing 65. I said, without trying to be argumentative, sir, that's what the speed of the sign is, that's right. Oh, he said, that's the daytime speed. He said, the speed changes at six o'clock. He said, it's now 6.02. Oh. It was before six o'clock when he stopped. Right. I said, again, not trying to be argumentative, sir, there's nothing on the sign that says 6 p.m. He just says day and night. He said ignorance of the law is no excuse. I knew it was going to be a long evening. He said because you are a non-resident, I'm going to have to take your license. You're going to have to follow me to the courthouse, Hall County Courthouse. But you will have to go immediately to trial. So I have $15 and I'm headed for trial. I have to wait my night court time because it's 8 o'clock when my name comes up and they start the night court. I'm found guilty of doing 65 and 60 in Nebraska. And the judge fines me $25. I said, Your Honor, I don't have $25. Could I? Wire, have my dad wire me some money through Western Union and pay the fine? He said, oh, absolutely. He said, but Western Union closed at 8 o'clock. He said, the high sheriff, William Ummel, will provide you lodging for the evening. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Now I'm going to be an ex-convict. <laughs> they took me downstairs of the Hall County courthouse into the jail. They took my belt and my shoelaces because they knew I was going to commit suicide. <laughs> so I, they gave me a mattress which is smaller than one of my mama's waffles all, all rolled up. And I carry that into this cell block. I look at all the axe murderers and wife beaters in there. And I find me an open cell and I put my mess in there and I give everybody one thing I dare you to come in here kind of looks. They may get a steak out of me, but I'm just going to get a hamburger out of them while they're getting a the steak out of me. And I mean that in a very good Christian way. <laughs> so, I, in about a half hour, the jailer comes by and says, Ballister? I said, yes, sir. He said, it's time for your one phone call. Said, yes, sir. I got go to this little room with a little what my wife would call 
a library table or a table about this wide and about four feet long pushed up against the wall with a phone on it with no dialer just an old black phone hmm. I knew my phone call was being monitored because it stood like this that's how I knew I was being monitored <laughs> so he he stand there and I pick up the phone this female voice says uh, this is the operator how my sister called I said, yes, I'd like to make a person-to-person -person collect call for Reverend Carl Ballastero, South Bend, Indiana. The number is, and I gave her the number. And she said, all right, and uh, who may I say is calling? I said, I am the son, Martin. And she said, and Martin, what number are you calling from? And I looked down, and all it said was Hall County Jail. I said, Hall County Jail. And she tackled at me. And I became an instant member of the He-Man Woman Haters Club. <laughs> I didn't stay a member real long, but for the, for the time being, it was not appreciated. So when my daddy answered the phone, I said, You're willing to wait, Dad. You're willing to wait. <laughs> No. I had practiced in my mind what I was going to say and how I was going to say it before I ever picked up the phone. Why can't we talk to God like that? Lord, you know what I'm going to do. You see where I'm at. I've got to have the help of This has to happen and this has to happen. I'm telling you, he's a prayer answering God.